Hey guys, so there is a new way to set up your projects and it's known as the monorepo method. And projects like Babel.js and React.js are using this and a lot of projects are starting to adopt it. And how it works is instead of separating your packages out into different repos and to uh, basically different folder structures and whatnot, you put everything into one. So here is Babel, and if we click on the packages folder, we can see they basically have everything dumped into this one packages folder. Um, and that is all their individual uh, projects, and then it's all living under the hood of Babel. And they're using a tool called Yarn Workspaces to uh, use this. And so we're going to take a look at how you can actually use Yarn Workspaces in your own project. Uh, and to set it up like this. Now before we get, begin, some of you are probably wondering why you'd ever want to do this. This seems like a ton of overhead to maintain um, over just splitting up the projects. But one of the big advantages of this is A, you can share dependencies, and we'll talk about that in a second. And two, you can very easily share code um, between the packages, which we're also about to see. So let's jump in and start a, our, our own yarn workspace, if you will. So I have an empty folder right here, and this is where I'm going to start my yarn workspace or start my project. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file in the root directory called package.json. So here is going to be basically the root of the project, and I called my project walnut, but you can call it whatever you want. and. Uh, here we specify two things. First, that it's private. So you say private is going to be true. And then the second is your workspaces. So here is an array of workspaces. And this is all your folders or all your packages. Um, so for us, I'm going to create two packages at first. I'm going to call the first one common and the second one um, server. So I now want to create two folders so I'm going to make a directory called common and I'm going to make directory called server and those are going to be my two workspaces and I'm going to cd into common and I'm going to do uh, yarn init dash y to initialize it and then I'm going to do the same thing inside of server so yarn init so now I have basically two individual projects common and server and I'm just going to open up common and do index.js and here I'm just going to uh, basically create a function export it and then um, I want to use that function inside of server so I'm just going to be using um, node.js and I'm going to be using module.exports for this because um, I don't want to set up babel or whatnot just for the simple thing and here I'm just going to say console.log hello from common. So now I want to be able to use this function inside of server. So I'm going to create a index.js file inside of server. And what I'm going to do is I can actually just import um, from the common folder. So I'm going to say const function, I guess we'll say common function is equal to require. And here we specify the name of our uh, the package or the folder. In this case, it is called common. So if I look at package.json, the name right there is what it's going to uh, have. So we're going to say common. And then we can say common function. We can just call it. And I'm just going to lowercase this because it's just a function. And we can call the function. So now if I tried to run this right now, it would, it would break, obviously, because the server does not know um, about common that common exists and to tell it it exists we have to add it as a dependency so I'm just going to say dependencies and I'm going to say common and in this case it's just 1.0 and now we do yarn install so in here I'll say yarn install and what this will do is it'll link the dependencies you'll notice a yarn lock showed up in the outer directory and if I do an ls, um, so if I go back up to my root directory by ls, you'll notice there's now a node modules there. 
and if I ls node modules, you'll see both common and server inside of there. So what's happening is it sets up a symlink. So now common is linked to common and server is linked to server. So now I can access um, this this common function here. So if I call if I run node server index.js, we'll see it says hello from common. Uh, so it was able to successfully use that function over there. Now, they are symlinked, so what that means is if I make a change over here, so uh, for example 12, and I were to rerun this, you notice I didn't have to do any kind of recompiling or anything, it goes ahead and has the value there. Um, so it updates pretty much like instantaneously, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go over is a better naming structure. So right now in server, you'll notice I am just saying require common and it's kind of ambiguous where this is coming from. So what people will do is they will take the name of their project. So for example, mine is called Walnut and they'll prefix it uh, basically what this project is uh, with that. So for example, I'm going to say at Walnut slash common. So this is a very common naming structure you'll see. And basically, it's the name of your project, at the name of your project, slash, and then the name of the individual package. So this would be at walnut slash common. And then over here, this would be at walnut slash server. Um, and then your dependency you'd need to update. You want to make sure it's going to be at walnut slash common. So then in your index.js, you would say at walnut slash common. So now it's very clear that this is coming from um, basically your own big mono repo and it's one of your packages. So now I need to do yarn install again to install the packages. And then I'm gonna say node server index.js to run it and uh, sure enough it works. All right, the other thing. So you saw with uh, a Babel that they had all their stuff under a folder called packages. Um, and I prefer to do it that way as well. So I'm gonna create a folder here called packages and then I'm gonna move common and server inside of it. So the only thing we now need to change is in our package.json. Here we were, um, and the reason why, by the way, that you put it all in packages is so now you have a very easy way to tell Yarn where all your workspaces are. Because all you do is you say packages star. Um, and now it's gonna know that everything inside of packages is a, a workspace. So we're gonna say Yarn not start yarn install and it'll set everything up it looks like it's good and then I can run packages server index.js again and oh can't find the module um, so I did mess something up and I think I just need to go inside of uh, I think I just need to get it to reinstall everything so I'm going to delete my node modules so remove rf node modules and then do a yarn install and try that again. Um, yep, and that worked. So because we changed the folder structure here, um, I just had to kill node modules and reinstall things. But now we can have everything inside of packages. Uh, and I would say there's one last thing that's kind of cool about yarn workspaces is when I install dependencies uh, they go to the top level. So for example, I'm going to go over to my packages server folder and I'm going to say yarn add GraphQL yoga. So this is a dependency I'd like to use in my project and what will happen is normally if you weren't using yarn workspaces, right, if you did an ls, you'd then have a node modules folder here, right? Uh, but you notice it's not here at all. Um, so what happens is it actually goes in this root folder. Uh, and if we do an ls on node modules, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff in there now. And basically these are all the dependencies uh, that GraphQL Yoga uses. So now, uh, whenever I'm installing packages, we only have one node modules. So I might be using GraphQL in this package and in this package, and now there's only gonna be one GraphQL installed um, in this whole workspace. So you will not have a, well you'll still have a big node module, but you won't have a large node module for every single project now. You only have one, um, which is very nice, and they all share dependencies. So yeah, that's how Yarn Workspaces work and how you can set one up. Now, this just gives you an idea of the concepts of how they work. 
uh, it doesn't really give you an idea how to actually integrate this in with your, for example, your own React application or whatnot. So what I'm going to do in tomorrow's video is go over how to add this to a React application um, and share it, for example, with a React native. So if I want to share a function uh, between those two, how would it work? Now it's relatively easy to set up if you're not using, it's pretty much the same setup, right? You can see how you might set this up if you were using your own um, webpack. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to do it with Create React App um, and Create React Native App. But yep, stay tuned, that's what's going to be coming down the pipe for tomorrow.